Hello everyone, Melissa here with Paleo Effects. And this week we are kicking off our first, what I like to call our first Tribe Tuesday. And we have an awesome guest with us. Um, and I'm just so um, beyond excited to have him in our first Tuesday for our first Facebook series. And he has a launch coming up and um, we couldn't be more excited to help promote that. And if you haven't seen it, you should. And we'll talk about that all, of course, in just a little bit. But um, everyone, I'd like you to please welcome here Jason Prawl from the Human Longevity Project. Jason, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to uh, chat with like-minded people. Ah, uh, yes. It's, it certainly uh, takes a tribe, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's, it's tough to find sometimes, you know. Um, I don't know where you live, but I live in middle of America. So a lot of times it uh, takes a lot of reaching out and a lot of work to um, build that like-minded tribe. So, um, so I just appreciate it. Yeah. Um, well, let's get started. And um, just for everyone watching at home, let me just say real life is happening today. <laughs> I've got... <laughs> I've got a five-year-old at home and he's not feeling well. So if you see him popping in um, to the side of me, just know that I'm a mom and life happens. So <laughs> we're just going to roll with it. Um, so anyway, um, so very important topic, which is human longevity. And alongside with that, um, you have um, the topic of chronic disease, the chronic disease epidemic, which um, – we've all heard that is just taking over the United States. Um, but before we get into that, I would like for you, Jason, to tell your story a little bit and how you got here. You know, everybody's kind of health journey or um, how they got to where they are started with something, right? Started with a shift, uh, something happened. And so I'd like to hear what your story is on that and, and how you all got to the Human Longevity Project? Yeah, ultimately to get to the film series that we made, it took, I think, two major shifts. The first major shift was when I essentially was dealing with my own chronic health conditions, which essentially started at 13, um, that really started impacting me. And that was joint pain that really affected my, my sports careers. And you know, I ended up playing college baseball and football. And so for the next eight years, you know, from 13 on, it actually did really impact my future and really what I was doing. So that's kind of where it started. And then in, in college, I had uh, skin conditions that really baffled the the medical conditions, you know, or the, the, the medical doctors. They, they labeled it, you know, gave it a name and everything, but they couldn't resolve it for me. And so I had to figure out what was really going on. And that was sort of early internet stages. And mm -hmm. so it wasn't super easy to, to find answers like it is today. There was no paleo FX. There was no conference I could go to, <laughs> at least that I was aware of from a consumer standpoint, to really gain this knowledge. And so um, it, it really forced me to look at a lot of what was going on and sort of play with things and try things out. And that's really what led to me uncovering sort of the, the fraud mm -hmm. and the chaos that was out there in terms of the health market. And so, um, so that, that prompted me over a number of years to eventually – transition from being a mechanical engineer as part of my profession into the practitioner space where I was helping people. And it started off by kind of more coaching. And then as I got more trained and well-versed in sort of functional medicine, integrative health, you know, running these complex labs, looking at biological mechanisms, underlying causes, and starting to put all the pieces together, you know, then eventually it led to more integrative health work and sort of operating like a doctor, but not a doctor because I didn't care about treating disease, nor did I care about prescribing medication. Sure. Right? right, so I could do all the other stuff, and and that's really what I was doing. But even then, the, the second big shift came from basically me realizing that there was a difference between re resolving the disease or or dysfunction and and getting in there as a practitioner and trying to balance things and do all these things. There's a difference between focusing on the disease aspect and then focusing on the health aspect, right? How do mm -hmm. we teach people to be healthy, right? Which is, you know, we talk a lot about this at sort of paleo effects and 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 the conferences that you guys are associated with and the the blogs and all the content that you guys produce. It's really it's doing the things that induce health, right? Not only eating the right. diets that that tend to be more healthy, but also the circadian rhythm aspect of things. You know, wearing blue blockers and that kind of thing, the mm -hmm. the cold tubs and the, the cold thermogenesis and the the infrared saunas and all the stuff that we're doing in sort of the let's say the biohacker or 
health lifestyle movement, those were the things that I needed to teach every single person that walked into my door, whether they had autoimmune conditions or cancer or digestive issues or hormonal imbalances. We had to do all those things, right? So the, the big shift for me came from really where I wanted to place my focus. And I wanted to place my focus on the health equation. And that's what led to the Human Longevity Project film series, just a nine part film series looking at longevity, but really through the lens of lifestyle medicine, right? What are these mm -hmm. people doing around the world that are making it to 90 and 100 in a somewhat healthy way? What are they doing to get there? But also what did they do 80 years ago? What was their birth like? What did their parents do? Right. So it was made, taking more of a historical context to that question than had ever been done before. Nobody asked, how did your parents give birth? Did they give you vaccines? Did you breastfeed? You know, were you running around, you know, basically naked and barefoot? Like nobody was really right. asking those questions. Where did you get your water? You know, all these things. The, the previous work in this in this area really just looked at what are the commonalities between all these areas where you see people living a long time. Mm -hmm. And then you end up with stupid answers like, oh, well, they ate beans and they drank right. wine at five o'clock, you know, and they all have some higher power that they preach to. And, 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 and well, yes, like those are potentially mechanisms by which we can look at health and longevity, but it was missing so much. Right. And, and it really didn't give you what you were looking for. You, you can't just drink wine at five o'clock and expect that to be a healthy, you know, <laughs> longevity practice especially when your wine and your grapes have glyphosates and additives and all this crap in them right so we have to work people other people were trying to compare apples to televisions you know like it wasn't even the same category right like so so we really want to take an, an accurate look at their lifestyle and say okay what did they do for their entirety of their life and of those things how much can we extract you know, how much can yeah. we bring forth to today, let alone the future? And and what are we doing in the modern world that they didn't even have, uh, you know, any concept of, right? Computers, right. And TVs, and oh, electricity didn't exist in most of these places 50 years ago. So, right. you know, we have to look at both sides of that equ equation. And that's really what we try, try to do in the film series. So here we are. And, you know, we weren't always like this. We, uh, the United States, we weren't always this sick. We did start from, um, the, you know, the non-industrial, uh, we, we started the same way that they started. And so wh what was the, the big kind of, um, I guess, big bang, if you will, shift for the United States, do you think? Was it well, the industrial? Like, Yeah, I, I, think, I think there was many aspects to that, right? And we have to look at key moments in the course of our history and development both on this, let's say, negative side, as well as the positive side, right? People talk about antibiotics like they're the worst things in the world. Well, yeah, like if we're taking antibiotics today, you know, just willy-nilly and continuing their use, then yes, that can be very detrimental. However, if you're in a life-threatening situation, antibiotics save a lot of lives. There's no right. arguing that they save millions and millions of lives. So we did make some progress in a lot of, a lot of ways, and our lives are so much more comfortable today than they were mm -hmm. back then. So we, we can't glorify their life and say, you know, they live such a natural life and how, how wonderful that would be because they would walk 30 kilometers to go get something that I can order on Amazon, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. well, say there's value in walking those 30 kilometers that lead to longevity. You know, sure. that's, it's a, it's a fine argument to make on paper. I can sit here and preach to you all day, but are you really going to walk 30 kilometers, 20 miles? If I just ask you to, probably not, right? So we have to recognize that there's sort of give and take. But I think for us, the things that we did first, I think the first big switch came from the chemical revolution. Basically, in, in World War II era, right, the 30s and 40s is when we started turning plastic. We made plastics, right? We really mm -hmm. turned petrochemicals and started this whole new wave, which gave us a lot of cool stuff. Every basically everything on my desk is here because we knew how to work with plastics, right? right. Um, so yeah. they're really, really valuable. And they arguably, as I learned in my engineering courses, they led us to winning the war in, in a large way uh, because we were right. able to insulate wires and all these things. So that was probably a big shift because now we're introducing all these new chemicals now that we had all this new chemistry to play with. And basically the experiment began in the US with regard to which chemicals, which plastics, which, which stuff was harmful.
to not only humans, but the earth and the planet as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. earth, the ecosystem. So that was a big shift. And then I think the second one came when we essentially introduced, well, two of them. The two big ones were the vaccine movement, which I don't think was too horrible when it comes to the out health outcomes until like the 80s and 90s when we really started jacking up the doses and then we added a bunch of you know hep b and all kinds of weird vaccines that mm -hmm. you know i don't know why we're vaccinating people against sexually transmitted diseases when they're infants you know th these type of things there's some weird vaccines that we started doing hpv just all over the place so mm -hmm. once the vaccine boom hit i think that that shifted our, our health trajectory according to data and and a lot of logistical analysis mm -hmm. and then the other part of that was the glyphosate and the, the pesticides and herbicides. What you can look at graph after graph, chart after chart, and see that as that stuff really started to ramp up, all of our health conditions started going crazy. So it's never one thing or the other, right? It's it's a, a whole host of things that are really factored into this equation. But the the glyphosates, I'm convinced more and more every single day how much those um, and, and really the roundup, mm -hmm. you know, because there's other aspects yeah. to, to the pesticides, but that was a huge moment in time for our, uh, in terms of our negative outcomes when it comes to health. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, like you said, among among many other things. Um, sorry, guys. Um, so, um, so it's you know it's obviously affecting everyone and of all ages within the United States, and our children are really being affected with just, I mean, they're not going to possibly live as long as our, you know, past generations. And it's, it's just alarming. And, and so I, um, that being said, is there one gender that is affected more than the other? Yeah, this or is hard, is it just, it's hard to say, right? I mean, the data bears out such that women tend to li live longer than men. Um, mm -hmm. that's pretty clear. Um, and there's some interesting theories as to why, I mean, one aspect is, you know, a woman's life includes, um, hopefully at least in natural parts of the world, you would have a, a cycle, right? You would have a moon cycle, right? You would be mm -hmm. a period every month. Yeah. And that's interesting because what you're doing is you're actually purging, you're actually shedding, right? So you're actually right. shedding and detoxifying in a, in a very sacred way. You know, if you ask indigenous cultures and, and you know, these cultures around the world, they really hold the woman's cycle in, in really high regard. Um, so mm -hmm. there's something very sacred about that in, in the purging aspect from a physiological perspective. But then also you tip over into menopause later in life where you now stop dedicating energy to one aspect of your life, which is procreation. And now you're sort of in this sort of preservation mode, right? So women have this cool little shift that happens that allows them to sort of preserve life. And I know in our culture, we, we sort of, you know, look at menopause as this horrible thing, but most other cultures don't look at it that way. So that's one aspect and one theory that, that may lead women to sort of living longer. There's also some interesting data though, that look at the man and the wife in sort of a household situation. And when the man dies first, um, women tend to live longer than women that have husbands around. <laughs> and I think that's because <laughs> traditionally are the ones taking care of, of the men, taking care of the household. Right. And We're then, probably not as stressed. <laughs> right. It, 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 oh. it, when the woman dies first, men's life span tends to shorten. So in other words, mm -hmm. men as men, we rely on women to live help live us long help us live longer. And women, unfortunately, the men are taking a toll on your guys' lives. That's what the data shows, you know, and it's not worth getting into a social debate about this stuff, but it's very interesting sure. to sort of hypothesize why that might be. Um, but it does seem to be for most places, women are living longer. Sardinia, Italy, the mountain region of Sardinia, there, there is a place where historically or statistically, men are making it to 100 at, at a higher rate than women. And that's one of the few places on earth where we find that to be the case um, in a mm -hmm. significant way. So that's interesting, right? But at the end of the day, if we look at our chronic disease issues, we see that women are getting autoimmune diseases at a much higher rate than men. Men tend to get heart yeah. disease more than women. So, you know, there's a, we have to look at the aspect of longevity in terms of longevity, just to live long. But then the other aspect mm -hmm. is how well are we living? How much disease are we having? How much pain and suffering are we going through in our life? And that seems to be 
I think what most people really care about is is that side of the equation, not necessarily how how many years they're chopped up, right? So right, um, right. It yeah, right. Um, and you know, quality certainly is what you're saying. Quality over quantity for sure. Um, you talked about, you know, the men and the women being together and when the one is gone and whatever, but that brings me to think of, there was a quote on, um, your Facebook page that said, um, the bird, and I'm just going to read it because I wrote it down. Sorry guys. Um, <laughs> the bird is a nest, the spider a web, and man friendship. Um, but as, you know, as a species, we are wired for human connection, but um, we're not as connected as past generations. And, and why, do you, why do you think that is? I mean, you could say that we are with technology, but we're not, really? but are we? Right. Are we really? Yeah, and we, t we were before before we got on air, and we we kind of talked about it. I think it's worth saying. You know, we were talking about your son being sick, and yeah, um, you know, it's 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 not a fun thing to go through, but it's also how important it is to get sick when we're kids, right? And this is what we saw mm -hmm. in the world is that these kids had all these sort of infections and bugs and sicknesses that we are trying right. to avoid, and how important it was for the immune system to to learn and to train in in that process. Right. We talked about you guys letting the sick, sickness sort of let, letting it pass, letting the, the immune system run its course. So, right. so important. So anyway, I just want to sort of honor you for that and also bring that to light because that's a very, very important aspect to actually mm -hmm. longevity too, you know, um, as well as avoiding cancer and all these things. So the immune system's proper and balanced function. So very, very important. Um, when it comes to connection, I think there's so many aspects to this, to this topic. One is, is that we are always as connected as we've ever been. We, it's just the perception that we're not connected, right? And the feeling that we're not connected. So I wholeheartedly agree that today, on average, in our society, we feel disconnected more than ever. And practically speaking, we don't have the human to human, face to face connections like we once did. We can't rely on people right. as much. We don't have close friends. We, we, we feel like we are isolated. And on a more esoteric spiritual level, it doesn't exist, right? In fact, you actually ask a lot of people from sort of Zen cultures or Buddhist cultures or the Eastern philosophies is there is only connection. That's all there ever is. And, and disease only comes from the sense of disconnection, right? This is a uh -huh. that we are disconnected. And so, so we can be connected to ourselves. We could be connected to God or the creator or the universe. We could be connected to nature. We could be connected to our children, to our, our family, to our friends. We could be connected to so many things. And yet we in today's world feel disconnected. And I think the, the reason is because mm -hmm. the things that we're, where we're looking for connection is in the artificial, right? This type of connection that we have here is fantastic for sharing information and sort of building a very surface level relationship. You know, I feel like I know you, right? A little, right? I even feel like I know your little guy, right? There is a <laughs> game from this and that's fantastic. We can't assume or pretend that this is a deep, deep physical and sort of intimate real connection right that that comes from being yeah. amongst others you can feel people's energy you can hug them you can be around them you can really get a sense of knowing them and spending time with them right mm -hmm. so um mm -hmm. and another aspect of actual physical attachments and connections where as children and, and our mothers primarily but also our fathers we develop an attachment to style to them and this is borne out in a lot of emotional trauma research and and attachment theory and all this stuff but there's a real life implications for this so as our families just start to tear apart you know in meaning our immediate nuclear family you know moms and dads mm -hmm. divorce at a high rate here in our culture it's getting better i think but but that's still there then we have kids that move out of the home early in life you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, like get me out of here right and let me go be independent you know in fact if you live with mom at 25 it's like a weird thing but yet you can go to russia or spain or a lot of these other sort of modern or Western cultures, and you'll find, you know, kids living with their parents and well into and, early adulthood. So yeah, we're disconnecting from the from our family. You know, grandparents are not living with with parents. This is what we see in other cultures. The, the, the nuclear unit remains together for longer periods, and even when they're outside of the house, they're still in the same village, still in the same area, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so the, mm -hmm. They're just not acting like a community. And it's not just community for the sake of community, but if you have a real 
sense of community, then you can develop the connection. And the connection is the key thing. So we just have to find a way to start developing better connection with those around us. We don't know our neighbors anymore. You know, we just, right. because we don't need to. We can, because we, we theoretically can be independent, we, we, we go do that. These villages, these people 50 years ago in Sardinia or Okinawa, they couldn't afford to be independent. They, they, that was not a luxury they had. They depended on other people for survival and for a lack of suffering. So mm-hmm. it's re- almost a requirement for their, for their life. It's not a requirement for ours. So because we, right. we can get away with it, we do. And then we, we end up suffering for it in the long run because we, we don't have a sense of connection. But, but again, I think it's important to recognize if you look at sort of the, the Buddhist monks or the people in the ashrams or monasteries or whatever, there's a lot of isolation in, in those lifestyles. And yet they feel more connected than we do because they're connected to something else, something outside of them, or maybe even something inside of them, right? So yeah. we have to recognize that connection is a perception we can be connected to anything if we so choose. So if we, there's a difference between being lonely or being alone and feeling lonely, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Again, I think we have to recognize the perception aspect of this, but also uh, look at the very real world component of this as well. Yeah, well, I can certainly talk to just feeling lonely, honestly. I mean, I feel, I mean, I know so many people. I know so many people and, you know, I, but I, I, you know, I and you too lived before the time of cell phones and computers that, you know, I mean, I had a, you know, I was, um, I was almost out of high school before computers came along, you know, and the AOL craze. And, and so um, it's certainly different for me today, you know, even as an adult and as a parent trying to navigate our way through how to teach our kids to find real connection and to um, not only rely on the technology and the screens. And, and so it's, it's a real, um, it's a real challenge, I would yeah. say for as, as an, as, an, as a parent, especially it's trying to, job. yeah, yeah. Trying to teach them like, well, you know, you hate saying, well, when I was a kid, I didn't have, you know, all this it really stuff. Was but, yeah. We were kids. It really was yeah. Different. I know, I'm like, go climb a tree. <laughs> I was climbing trees at your age. What? Right. You're seven. You're not getting a cell phone. No way. You well, know, it, just. They'll sure be climbing trees in, in virtual reality, right? Like, that's what we're staring at right now. So, mm-hmm. these philosophies and these concepts, while they seem sort of fluffy and esoteric, and oh, I don't have to worry about that, give me the practical, these are going to be real world issues in the very, very near future. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just push this stuff off. But when I can order food to my door on my phone and I can go shopping online and I can sit here at a computer and just have everything come to me, all mm-hmm. of a sudden this convenience, this really cool technology turns into a very real world problem that we have to worry about. But also if we flip it around, can possibly provide a real world solution. What if on my phone I could organize a little picnic or a barbecue or a community dinner where 30 people in a the, in the mile radius get together at a local park mm-hmm, and we can all hang out just by, yeah. a, right? So right. we can use these things in a different way if we so choose. We just have to recognize the problem that we're creating and what the solution is when it comes to the things we really want, which is to feel connected, to feel secure, to have friends, to feel loved, right? To, to feel like I have time and I have people and, and, and yes. safety, right? We think we want other things, convenience and quickness and all this other nonsense, but convenience is, is quite an enemy. It's all, all convenience is really doing. People think convenience saves time. It saves movement. Convenience right. saves movement. It's very, very important to recognize that it just requires you to move less, right? Do mm-hmm. less, less mm-hmm. that's what convenience is. And so yeah. we're talking about in sort of the primal paleo movement, or, or, yeah. or the movement, I mean the, the, the broader sphere. We're ta- what we're talking about is how can I move more? You know, the right. evil sitting and standing. No, how do I you know, get a treadmill desk or a, a walking desk where I keep moving every, you know, I think Dick, my, our friend Daryl Edwards calls it movement sniffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I absolutely love that phrase because it's so, so important. They didn't have to worry about movement snacks 50 years ago in in Costa Rica. They're moving all, I mean, when it comes to movement, they were snacking all day long. 
right? So, right, right. So, so we have to recognize some of these things that we're and, and what we really want out of life instead of this artificial desire that we come up with. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. You know, on a small level, I, you know, we just recently switched from like a standardized coffee maker to just the coffee press because I, I, I just was like, you know, it's about the process, right? It's about the process. It's about the boiling of the water and, and, the, and the grounds and like pouring it in and waiting for it and letting it steep. And, and it's just become this really awesome ritual. You know, we got, we made sure to get like an off, you know, like a stainless steel with no, um, with no plastic and and it and I was just like we really need to ditch this because this is just convenience right and it's we feel like we have to wake up and just start drinking our coffee and that's not really what you know we don't feel like we really don't feel like we have to have coffee in order to, to survive the day so we thought we like to actually indulge and enjoy and taste it and so why are we doing it you know this isn't this coffee maker isn't doing our coffee justice right so so um, important. Is your coffee better when you do that, like from a taste standpoint? Oh, oh, absolutely, but absolutely. It's really, really important what you're making here, which is that you could, you know, get a regular coffee maker and set the timer, right? A lot of them have, most of them should have timers that go off at seven thirty. We, yep, we but, did that. But what what you're talking about is slowing things down. You're, what you're doing is you're basically trading in the Tim Ferriss lifestyle, right? Which is to yes. say. How much can I get done as efficiently as possible? And, and and think about what you're doing with that process. You're trying to save time with one one uh, aspect of your life, right? Mm -hmm. one, one objective. So and, and with that time that you save, you're going to dedicate it to something else, right? So you're all you're doing is saving time to do more, right? And right. This never ends. And then you go to a different task in your life and you say, oh, I'm going to save time there. I save. I can cut the time in half. Wonderful. But you're not taking that time to meditate. You're not taking that time to go play with your kids necessarily. You're not taking that time to just sit and relax. You're not taking the time to go out for a walk outside of nature. Most of us are saving time so that we can dedicate it to other busy parts of our life to get more done, to make more money, to do more work. So that is a recipe and a, and a design that fails. You know, if you take it to its logical extreme, which is continuing the efficiency of your life just to do more shit. You know, what we really yeah. want to do, if we want to save time, is to save time and dedicate it to the things that are bringing us joy and love and right. life and these type of things and rest. And so this is a really, really brilliant way to do that, which is to just slow the whole process down, right? If you slow down time, yeah. you live longer, you know? It's a really funny relationship with time and, and how long you live. You slow time down and you get to live longer. Speed time up, that shorter. That guy, that is a, such a, such a, I, like I want to do that <laughs> so hard. Just slow down. You get to live longer, right? So, I know, I know. You'll get more done if you slow down. What? No, you won't. <laughs> my brain, my type A brain. I'm really working on it though. I really am, you know, I'm trying to cut things out. And, and I, and I think for you guys to bring something like this to, you know, bring awareness to, just longevity and and the lifestyles of the different cultures and I mean it's such an important topic we we all really need to be stopping and paying attention and and definitely slowing down and 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 less truly is more in this case you know less is more and, and you know the thing is we've kind of gotten a little philosophical and 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 and, and explored some broad concepts and that is important but it's important also to look at the practical stuff, right? And we need to understand mm -hmm. what's going on and why, why we're so sick and, and how we improve our health in the long term. And that's really what we try to do with the Human Longevity Project. You know, we, we talk about mitochondrial function and the microbiota and how it affects the immune system, how the, micro, how the microbiota affects, honestly, everything. How it communicates everything. with mitochondria, how your yep. weird three-way communication or actually four-way between the microbiota, which has its own genes, your mitochondria, which it has its own genes, your somatic cell DNA, of course, which is, let's say, quote, unquote, you, and then you have the external environments, right? So the, the, the viruses and the bacteria and the fungi that's out there in the environment, plus the food that you eat, which has its own microRNA. So you have like all mm -hmm. these communicating in, a, in this crazy complex way. So, you know, these are the things we cover on how this happens and why it's important and what to do about it. Um, and, and why it's so important to do very, very simple things. Because that's the conundrum that we find ourselves in. 
Like we're trying to solve big complex disease cases and, and issues. And the, the, the irony of that is, is that it's the simple things that are gonna solve those problems, right? The getting outside, right. getting rid of stuff, the slowing down, the connection. But, but the question that I always wanted to explore and what we did in the film, at least try to do that as best we could is explain how those simple things actually filter down to disease or to health. You know, how is it that connection actually filters to cellular and genetic function? It's a big question, right? And there's a yeah. lot of millions and millions of dollars in research looking into this type of thing. You know, so mm -hmm. these are the things that we want to explore. How does, how does, you know, cold thermogenesis actually affect health? How does, you know, an infrared sauna affect health? How does producing toxins and glyphosates and eating organic foods and all these things affect health? How does, how is it that all these cultures ate what we would maybe classify as a non, or let's say a not optimal paleo diet? And sure, right. 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 In Sardinia. Like, all the right. It, hey, yeah. Amazing. In fact, it's funny because you hear some people in the documentary say that's all we eat. So the question is not, yeah. not but rather to say, that's interesting. Why? Is there something special about the people? Is there something special about the bread? Is there something special about what they were doing? What is it that allowed them to do that in a healthy way? And once we answer that, can we do that today? Or do we have to say, unfortunately, because our whole supply chain sucks when it comes to wheat and grains. Yeah. Perhaps it is not a thing that's going to lead to longevity today. Right. So, so these are the questions that we want to answer and not really have a dogmatic take on diet or anything else, but just right. simply, and, and, and if so, may, can we figure out why that worked or what, what that's all about? And because mm -hmm. maybe we can't do that anymore. And maybe we can. We just have to tweak some things or maybe we still need to stay away. So that's what we really explored. You know, and a lot of people in the, in the longevity space, when it comes to looking at these cultures, they, not a lot of people, certain groups that maintain that they ate a vegetarian or vegan diet. And while I'm not here to bash a vegetarian or vegan diet, because I've seen people right. go vegetarian or vegan and actually improve their health status because it probably shifted the balance in a positive direction. And I've seen people go the other way, where they're, they're getting out of a vegetarian vegan diet and getting healthy and moving more to an almost exclusive meat-based diet. So right. I'm not dogmatic with this. I've seen both work and both shifts improve. But what I can say for sure, these these people that live in these quote-unquote blue zones, these places around the world that we went and found these people, not vegetarian, not vegan, they ate lots of meat you know, and lots of cheese. Um, you know, it was balanced and they did eat a ton of plants, but they weren't always the plants that we think of, you know, sometimes they were beans and rice and corn and mm -hmm. rice. so th it's a great way to explore the diet question through a lens of people living today who also lived in a different era than us. And so that's right. really, it was a cool way to sort of explore that without preaching anything so to speak, but really just trying to find the nuance. That was really what we tried to do with the diet, right? Is to mm -hmm. try to find mm -hmm. the, nuance in the equations and let people make the decisions for, for themselves on what they want to do based on the nuance. And I'll say to the suspense, the most important thing that we came back with on the diet, got to be organic, hopefully growing in really, really good soils, right? The timing of your food and when you're eating and, mm -hmm. and that's probably the most important. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not just not yeah. to say that you already know that, but but it's interesting to explore the dynamics and the intricacies and the nuance of, of some of these diets and why they work. So, uh, you know, that's it's a fun one for paleo people because I think they get it. <laughs> they, they yeah, get, get the nuance, even though they might disagree with some of this stuff. Well, like, okay, right? But sure. they, paleo and the primal communities at least have a lens through which they can see this stuff. And I think understand it on a level that, to be honest, maybe some others don't really see it through. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we do see it on the, like you said, primal level. And that, um, and also too, it's just, it, it, everybody's body is different and not one diet is works for everybody. And so I know a lot of people within our space, that's, that's what we believe, you know? And so, right you know, for, it's the best yeah. message you can give. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't want to obviously give any spoiler alerts or anything for the actual uh, documentary series, but if, 
if someone could take one thing away today, just one, and and um, make a change to where just one thing today, what what would you say that that would be? Um, I'm going to give you an answer that's really boring and really <laughs> and not okay. most profound. Um, and to be honest, I didn't realize how important it was until I really went through and did this. Um, and this is after working for years as a practitioner and working on my own health and thinking I knew quite a bit about this stuff. Um, simplify everything. Everything in your life. Simplify, simplify everything. everything. Simplify your calendar, you know, your to-do list. Simplify the food choices that you're making. Simplify the cleaning products and the soaps and all those things. Simplify mm -hmm. your thought process. Simplify your relationships. You know, are you, are you carrying on too many chaotic relationships and thinking that you can hold on to them all? Just simplify mm -hmm. every aspect of your life. Simplify the clothes that you wear and the closets and the household items. Simplify, simplify, simplify. It, when you, using your own example, you went from an automatic, you know, normal, quote unquote, normal coffee machine to more mm -hmm. of a press. That is a small example that is yielding a very, very drastic change in your mentality, your your activity, and your your pace. So you just simplified, I would say, half step or whatever. And it made a huge mm -hmm. difference in terms of how you, and it may be uncomfortable and weird and kind of like an adjustment, but that simple, simple thing that you shifted, right, is very, very important. Shifting to yeah. cooking food more often, slowing mm -hmm. down, you know, smelling your food, learning to cook, like simplifying the, the, the way in which you're eating your meals and cooking your meals. I mean, it's so, so critical. And if you can just find places like you did right there, it's, I love that mm -hmm. example. I'm so glad you gave it because it's such a almost silly example. That it's, so yeah. good, right? it's like, it's, <laughs> you would never even think of that, right? It's not something I would ever put in the ebook or anything like that, like, but it's so, yeah. so important, right? So yeah. Um, Simplify instead of getting the organic apple chips in a bag, eat a damn apple. Right. And if you, right. and if you find out an, an apple in nature that you can pick off a tree that has the microbiota of the environment on the coating of that apple before it. And by the way, as a mechanical engineer, I went through an apple um, uh, manufacturing plant and I saw mm -hmm. what they did with organic apples. I saw what they, what they do in that process. It's crazy. They wash yeah. up, they whack, they go, go through all kinds of stuff. And that's still an organic apple. So again, the ultra simple way is to go out there and pick the apple yourself. The ultra mm -hmm. simple way is to go out and hunt your own meat. Now, right. there's an aspect to it that's not simple at all, but you're simplifying right. the process, right? You're going back to the simple aspect of nature. Mm -hmm. So simplify, simplify. That is, it's if you can find places to do that, I can guarantee you it will improve your health and you'll feel better. You'll feel more connected to life itself. I absolutely love that. That's, um, I think, going to be my new mantra. I mean, I'm just, I, I'm in that zone right now. I'm a mom of three and just so, you know, work from home, stay at home. I'm a work at home, stay at home mom. You know, it's just, life is crazy all the time. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to take that and run with it. I, I mean, <laughs> thank you for sharing that so much. You, you have to figure out your own life, right? Like where do yeah. you simplify my life, right? It's very different, different right. from something. And so, and it's not simplifying right. the whole thing all at once. It's like trying to find these little levers in your life that you can really pull that make a big difference. And I think if you can simplify those things, slowly mm -hmm. but continue to simplify, what you find is that you have more time in the day. You have more, yeah. you have more enjoyment in the process itself of making coffee, right? You just yeah. enjoy things more because you're not overloaded, overstimulated, overburdened with all the things that you're doing. And that's, that goes yeah. through your body. It's not overburdened with all the stuff you're, you, you process stuff you're putting in it that's basically complex by nature. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. This is so great. Um, so uh, there are so many things we could take away here and talk about, like, all day. But um, let's um, talk about your launch that's coming up, the Human Longevity Project. This is the second launch like a relaunch. Am I right about that? Yes. I mean, I watched the first time around. That was what, a year ago? A year, was that a year yeah. ago? Or was it two years ago? Sure yeah. Okay. So um, I watched the whole thing. This was before I was a part of Paleo FX. And so I was just glued to it like that, you know, just, it was amazing. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So 
Um, I'm highly anticipating, you know, um, it doing well again. I know we're going to just, you guys watching, like, you cannot miss this. If you miss it the first time, do not miss it this time. It's truly, truly life-changing. And um, um, it's, it, the launch is on 619, June 19th. And so, um, and, and it's for a limited time, you guys. So it's, it's, it's for, you know, a short window here. It's a nine-part series, so it's nine days. And, and, then, and then that's, that's pretty much it. So don't miss out. Um, and I did put the link in um, the caption on the Facebook um, on the Facebook Live post, and so you can find the link there to get to um, registering to make sure you get notified to uh, watch the launch or to watch the Human Longevity Project. Um, and other than that, what else is coming up for you guys this year? Well, I kind of want to add a few things to that because I haven't sure. really told maybe anybody i don't know maybe one person but um for your audience if anybody's interested we're gonna we're doing something for the first time you know with this launch um you know most people are familiar with the format you know you show an episode a day and that way people sure. can get a chance to watch it um in, in sort of that period uh but we're gonna have kind of a binge watch weekend which we've never done ah. which basically makes all the episodes available on like day three or four for that first weekend so you're gonna get like mm -hmm. You get to see like episode six, seven, and eight, and all that stuff before anybody. So you know, if you're a little late or whatever, and you just like to want to kind of cruise through things and check things out, you can watch it on that weekend. So keep awesome. that here, whatever that means. But um, you know, we've not I've never okay told sort of this secret, but, <laughs> you know. Um, but but that's kind of a fun thing that we we're excited about. Um, and we're actually just releasing a course. We've got a, a, a micro learning course. So what we did with our course, which is attached to um, the the film series and the launch, we make that available for honestly the lowest price it's ever going to be available. Um, mm -hmm. It's essentially a micro learning course. So there are little short videos, very, very quick, quick hitters. There's no fluff in any of this. It's not these big, long, elaborate. You see a lot of these courses are like sales pitches. They're like just, right. you know, babbling on and on about stuff. We're like telling you, here's what you do. Then you do this, go through this. Here's your homework, do this, this, this. And after you get done with that, we're going to move on to the next stuff. We talk about circadian rhythm and cleaning up the home and emotional trauma and uh, yeah you know, stuff. There's like there's like eight, seven or eight modules and a couple of addendums, and it's literally bang, bang, bang. So we're adding that this year. Um, That's this awesome. Year, we launched this film series. Is now we're actually it's gone after this. This, this is it. We're going to shelve it. It's not going to be. Cool. So yeah, we're moving on. We're we're currently. Filming a next our next film series, which is looking at indigenous cultures um, and ancient ancient cultures and the way they heal mind, body, spirit. So this mm -hmm. is Ayurveda and Buddhism and, yes. and the shamanism, if you will, you know, in Peru and Colombia and Africa and Russia. You know, so we're actually looking at indigenous ways how they're using various plants and uh, divination, all kinds of crazy methods that are pretty mm -hmm. cool. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, so. Human longevity, it's that series is done after this launch and it's never coming back. And so, uh, you know, if you want to watch it, if you haven't seen it yet, this is going to be the last opportunity. And, and, and again, we wanted to make it practical. The info is great. It's very important to get the understanding of this stuff, but to have a course that kind of backs it up and takes you, watches, yeah. you know, it was really important for us to create that. I love that you're doing that because so many people will watch something like this and then go, okay, now, now what do I do? Yeah. How do I do this? How do I do this in my life? How do I start? What does that mean? What does that look like for me? Yeah. And so I, that is fantastic. I walk through, you know, as a practitioner, I worked for years and I, I would do this stuff. I, I mean, people would pay me thousands of dollars, honestly, to basically mm -hmm. work with them, run some labs and then do all this stuff. And this is the stuff right. I was doing with all those people with autoimmune conditions and cancers, teaching them actual steps, how to implement this stuff into their life. How to do and it, what to do, uh, when to do it, awesome. what's important to focus on, where do you start, how do you improve, mm -hmm. health? how do you improve mitochondrial function, how do you improve sleep, mm -hmm. how do you, mm -hmm. you know, fix emotional traumas, how do you do this stuff, you know, so yeah. we, we walk you through and we also provide links for products that, that, that you may or may not want to buy, like it's not our stuff, we're just linking to that stuff for resources so it saves you time to go, what the heck do I do with this stuff, but also right. other info that you can look up and read about, you know, and, and like, for mm -hmm. example, trauma, you know, it's hard to coach somebody through trauma through a course, but we provide lots of links and methods on that are very successful, like EMDR, 
eye movement desensitization yeah. processing. You know, how you know just to learn more about that and find a practitioner that can help you with that. You know, um, you know, hypotherapy or whatever it is. These various techniques. Um, you know, adult attachment repair model. Right? What is that? You know, mm-hmm. so we can mm-hmm. we're shortcutting the process on some of this stuff that you might have to do on your own. But some of the other stuff, it's like okay, do this and do that and do this. And and the process is to build upon the previous module, continue to move forward in a step-by-step process. So, and it's nice because it's not a 45 minute video or two hour video that you gotta watch. It's literally like a 30 second video or a minute and a half video or a two minute video. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So you can do at your own pace and then you get to the implement stage of the the module or the equation and you implement and you give yourself a few days, you know, even just clearing up the space. I'll give you a hint right now. Throwing away some old stuff, selling some things on you know, Craigslist or eBay, or going taking them to the the Goodwill, just cleaning up the home of excess stuff like clothes. Yeah, frees up energy so that you can heal. We got to clear the clogged energy, all the clogged emotions, all the clogged stuff in our homes, mm-hmm. in our closets, in our minds. So you know, people don't think about these things, but it's a really mm-hmm. important from a from a mental standpoint but but almost a symbolic standpoint as well that you're saying mm-hmm. I'm willing to get rid of this bullshit i'm willing to get rid of this right. thing that stuck with me when i was in a really bad place now it's gone i'm moving on from that part of my life right so that's more one of the more kind of weird or esoteric aspects but every there's also very very real things how to improve the the sleep environment right how to all this stuff mm-hmm. We want yeah. that's what I'm really excited about. It actually is offering that for people to make real changes into their health because that's what I care about. It's why I became a practitioner. And that's why mm-hmm. I made that film series. But if it's just information without the stuff to, to really implement, then it, it can be a little challenging. Yeah, that's right. That's so true. I'm so glad that you did that. That's a super surprise and I love that. That's fantastic. Um well, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um I know I'm just beyond super excited. I'm definitely going to be watching it again. And I'm probably going to be doing that course because I just, I'm, um, oh, I guess a functional health information junkie, if you will. I probably should have been a naturopathic doctor, but hey, well, and, here and we are. Some people, you know, and I'm kind of one of them, is I just like to have a thing that walks me through stuff that kind of holds me accountable, mm-hmm. I guess is the better way to say that yeah it says here's your step do this I'm like, okay let me do that right and it just makes things yeah. easy to have that and i know a lot of people like that too so uh, but otherwise no I, I think we'd love to just have as many people enjoy the series and share it with as many people as as they can that would help that they feel like would help them um i think again the paleo and the primal audiences are gonna love this stuff because it is, speaks oh, so yeah. much to you i mean it is so oh, yeah primal and paleo and in terms of philosophy and messaging and all that, but also, you know, in my opinion, the paleo and primal crowd is tends to be a little bit more intellectual on some of this stuff. A little more well studied, maybe is the best way to say that, because they're familiar yeah. with some of these people, thought about them and, and heard a lot about some of this stuff. And so um, you know, you'll kind of get some of the stuff when we talk on the geeky level. And believe me, we get freaking geeky. We got people oh, like yeah. Drazian in there like going nuts on on some of his stuff. So um, Oh yeah. Geeky. Was, yeah. He was at Paleo FX this year. One of my favorite. Yeah. Um, he gets geeky as hell. We got Rob Wolf. Crusher, oh, yeah. He's, he's like guy. the, those two are like the gods of Paleo FX, right? They were the original gangsters. <laughs> yeah. So, so it just resonates. You just get it. It yeah. makes sense, right? So, so yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's just it's so well suited for, for the audience. So I, I just hope that they have the time, they can check it out, and um, hope they enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. I have no doubt that you all will enjoy it because you will watch it. And, um, you know, backed by research and backed by science. And that's, that's what we're all about. And we love that. We, we gobble all of that up. So um, I just appreciate your, you and your team's work so, 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 so much. Um, it's, you know, like I said, it's, it, we we all need to know this. We all need to be made aware of this and kind of punched in the face with it, if you will, you know, like yeah. punched in the face to slow down and simplify everything, right? Absolutely. For any new parents too, there's actually a whole episode on raising healthy kids. So, you know, you clearly have some of these things already locked in, but for some of us that walk into parenthood, 
unexpected or maybe mm-hmm. like, you know, I, where do I start? You know, why yeah. is it, let me give you one tip on this just to finish. Why is it important to breastfeed? Right? Obviously, mm-hmm. there's a few factors, but that's the stuff that, that feeds the gut microbiota. It develops, you know, you basically borrow mom's immune system because the child doesn't have an immune system up until what, six months or so. Um, so there's yeah. no immune system. And what's, what I found out, and I didn't know this from a, 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 a dental expert, that the breast is, because it's changing shape and it's malleable, when the baby sucks, it actually works to, it works with the palate, the upper palate to mm-hmm. develop a better palate that will allow us to fit the wisdom teeth and all these things. So we've heard for a long time that from the primal Weston A. Price crowd that vitamin right. A, K, and you know, these fat soluble vitamins are, are important for teeth and developing a healthy palate and jaw. Well, it turns out breastfeeding actually builds a healthy palate and jaw as well. I, I yeah. honestly didn't know that. I pride myself on trying to know everything. And so I was like, well, <laughs> we have more ammo now for breastfeeding, right? So there's just That's so many great. things that you know, are so cool and so practical and so important for, oh, yeah. for, for new, new families, new mothers. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely on that. Uh, I'm, you know, I nursed all babies until they were 18 and 19 months. And as long as, you know, possibly, yeah, as I possibly could. And, um, yeah, so I'm very much on that, on that train of breastfeed if you can, if it's doable for you. So. One, one guy in Costa Rica that said that when he was young, sometimes the mothers would breastfeed until like six or seven years old. Yes. Yes. What? Why? And he said, well, it was yeah. a way to prevent pregnancy. It's not foolproof, but it was a decent way to prevent pregnancy. And that was foolproof for me, yeah. Deer hoof, too. They, they actually would grind down a deer hoof, and the mothers would take that to prevent pregnancy. They had all kinds oh of my things. Cool. Not to say that anybody's going to do that. But, you know, it's just cool to hear how these people lived. You know, it's like that. They mm-hmm. invalidate some of these this thinking. So, anyway, it's fun stuff like that, that that we talk about, that all these old people talk about and share, and it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's nature, you know. We're, we're all animals. We're all animals. It's, Right? Nature is amazing, and our ability to understand and work with nature, or at least it used to be, pretty profound. We've sort of skewed it a little bit, but I, I think it's awesome. I just love hearing about these type of things, and, and there's so much of that in the film series. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm so, so excited. Thank you so, so much. Um, I know you're busy, and especially with the launch, and I'm just so happy. You, you all, I reached out to him like days ago and he was like, yeah, I can do Tuesday. Let's do it. And so we put this together so fast and I'm just so grateful for that. Thank you for making it work. Um, so everybody watching, make sure you uh, click on that link in the caption and um, get signed up for to get notifications for when the launch starts. Again, it starts on June 16th, or sorry, June 19th. And um, make sure you watch it because this is it. This is it. And so watch it. Um, learn how you can create longevity for yourself, uh, your family, and for the world. So um, until we meet again, everybody, thank you so much for watching. And uh, stay well and be happy. Thank you. See ya.